Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. And no, I'm not done with my studio yet. Uh, don't expect that for, I don't know, another 10 days or so. <laughs> it's going to be, I'm, uh, I'm too busy trying to figure out what to get my 32-year-old middle son for Christmas. <laughs> Good morning, Jackie. <laughs> I'm stumped. He's really techie. And, uh, and he's really into virtual reality. I can't even step into that arena. Um, I can't get him anything that has to do with sound and music because he's got a music production degree. He has about 10 guitars. Um, I may just get him a book. <laughs> So, um, hey, thanks, Jackie. Yeah, I'm. Uh, uh, I liked. I liked the studio the way it was. Uh, I'm gonna do some. Uh, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. We'll see what happens. And uh, so, anyway, we're getting into the numbers here. We're getting into January. And the first thing I want to illustrate to everybody is uh, uh, the nosedive is coming. <laughs> this is this is last Christmas over here, right? So you can see it's it's gonna plummet. Um, there's, there's no way around it. I mean, you guys just aren't going to buy a house over Christmas and you're not going to list one. So we have 6,500 homes on the market today. So that's pretty low. And you think about this. We have 6,500 homes on the market and we're putting 3,200 of them under contract every week. But we're backfilling them with the same number, about 31, 3,200 every week. So those listings are coming up and just kind of filling in for the ones that just went under under contract so it's a constant we've got that constant number between 32 and 3600 of homes going under contract and then um i think people just wait till i'm live and then they text me and then we backfill it with with more listings so what can we expect expect in january um <clears throat> that's going to be interesting i i just got something on the phone here and i i meant to pull it up and put it on so we could all see it but unfortunately I didn't have time, but is from the Crawford report, <laughs> excuse me, talking about what's normal. And uh, it's really interesting. So, you know, we've had um, seller markets, well, first from 2000 to 2003, and again in 2014 and 15, it was a time when buying and selling came together as a balanced market. Those were the only two times. There have only been two buyer markets recorded during the same time frame, from 06 to 09 and a brief three months in 2010. Seller markets were recorded from 2003 and 2005, 11 to 13, 15 to 21. So the last 18 months have been extreme, it said. But um, it's basically saying we have always been a seller's market. And um, instead of taking two months to sell a house now, it, you know people expect to sell it in one month, 40 to 60% over the asking price. And so it's kind of hard to look at normal. And we're going to take a little deep dive into this and see what we can expect going into January. We also have the Fed meeting today. And they, four times a year, they get together and they release what's called their, their dot chart, showing economic data and forecast. Every, each Fed, uh, Fed person puts their forecast in. And from there, they decide where they're going to go. So... It's saying, how does all this affect mortgage rates? That remains to be seen. It could hurt or help depending on the pace of the bond buying reduction and the magnitude of the shift in the dot plot. We both, uh, we know both are coming, but we don't know the magnitude of the change. Bottom line, be prepared for volatility tomorrow afternoon, which means today. This means mortgage rates seen in the morning could look drastically different than those seen at the end of the day. So as of today, there's not a whole lot of change that's out there. You can see we're sitting at, 3.16 and yesterday's 3.17, but they're expecting a pretty bouncy day today as the Fed chairman comes in. And here's our listings and the listings in active, this is seven days. Uh, we're sitting at about 65.79, like I just shared a moment ago. Uh, and it's finally hit 2020 levels. Normally we see inventory come up in January, but we didn't last year, we barely did. See, we had 11,500 and then 1164. 11,694, then the big plunge. Well, remember last January, it was pretty bleak here. We were all locked down. Businesses were still shut. Well, we had lost hope that things were going to get better anytime soon. And then it skyrocketed in March, April, and May uh, as far as listings. And then the major bidding wars started beating us up here as this number climbed down, April and May. Now, 2019, that was a different story. We had 17,000 homes the next week. 17,621, 17,996. By the end of January, 18,509. 
So are we going to climb up at that kind of a rate? It remains to be seen because, you know, that we don't have really good news out there again now with this Omicron virus. Uh, it's going to be, it's kind of shutting things down. It's not really shutting things down here, but it's making people very pessimistic. However, if you look at this price range in the 400 to 500,000 range, look at our inventory levels compared to 2020. They're way up there. They're back up to 2019 levels. That is an interesting thing. So they're back up to 2019 levels in a very aggressive price point. Now, 300 to 400,000. Let's see what we have. And that price point is showing that we're still hanging down here in the basement. So that is an active price range. It's getting gobbled up. There aren't that many left, which is why that number is so low. 500 to 600,000. You look and we're back up to 2019. So between four and six. Looks like our choices are getting much, much better. Now, having said that, it appears that the bidding wars are still there. In total, 60% of the homes are going over their list price, but then it, uh, but it's dropped recently to 42%. That's encouraging. But when we get down to that four to 500 range and three to 400 range, it's still up there, 53% and 44%. The other encouraging thing is, is between three and 400,000, the average going over list is $10,000. Now, that's an average. That means some of you are going to be, you know, outbid by 15000 some of you 20000 Kelly says uh, 500000 today was 250000 and Yeah, yeah, it was. We're, house prices have accelerated uh, a great deal. In fact, our house prices are at a 45-year high, pricing many buyers out of historic seller's market, according to new data by CoreLogic. And I don't need this little video down here, so let me get rid of that. They're saying new household formation, investor purchases, and pandemic-related factors driving demand for the limited supply of available homes for sale continues to propel the upward spiral of U.S. home prices. Frank, the president and CEO of CoreLogic, in a statement accompanying the report's findings, he said, however, we can expect home price growth to moderate over the near term as buyers take a break for the holidays. I don't think so. I mean, I don't think a two week dip in inventory is going to have an effect on pricing just because of the holidays. So going back to that article that I got here, it says with all the talk of 2022 projections and uncertainty, it's important for sellers to stay in the moment and lean into what is known. The reality of the greater Phoenix housing market is that supply is 67% below normal and is dropping. Demand is 23% above normal and stable for now. I lost that for a moment. Let me grab this back. Boy, that ticks me off. Here we go. So where was I? Um, and it's saying a full price offer may be enough to win a home. Buyers may have less, less, less pressure to do appraisal waivers and waive inspections. So that's the hope that we have coming out there. Saying here, Single family homes were the preferred choice for buyers over this time period with appreciation of detached properties 6.6% higher than attached properties. Single family homes went up 6.5% higher than condos and townhomes. That's pretty typical. And Arizona, Idaho, and Utah saw the highest home price increases from October 2020 to 2021 of over 24%. Arizona was up 28.8%. Idaho, 28.7%. You ever been to Twin Falls, Idaho? Man, it's beautiful up there. I was zipped through there this summer. Um, for the first time in 2021, Florida made it to the top list of home price gains with homes in Naples selling for 33.5% more than the previous year. It's too humid for me to go to Florida. So, so Gustavo says, when your clients ask if it's a good time to buy rental property in Arizona, what is your opinion? Um, I think it's a good time to buy rental property. Um, I think, you know, if you get the right one, I think... Uh, um, when you're buying condos, you have to look and see if if, uh, if they allow, you know, non-owner occupied uh, purchases. So you got to really check that out. You got to take a really good look at the HOA and make it make sure it's in good shape. Um, and then if you're looking at short-term vacation rentals and condos, I don't recommend it uh, because the HOA can change their mind on that really quick, and then you're stuck with the property. If you can find a decent single-family home in certain neighborhoods in this town, uh, you can rent them out the next day, um, especially in areas closer to downtown Phoenix. 
there's a huge demand for rentals and they're building these homes as rentals um, in really weird places. Um, one of them's up on I-17 just north of Phoenix and it's hugged right up to the freeway, your, your backyard. And they're beautiful little rental homes, but they're hugged right up next to I-17. And they say that when you live next to a freeway, you're supposed to pretend it's a river. Um, so when I go camping, I always pretend the river is a freeway. I drifted off there for a moment. But Zillow's recent forecast projects home prices to increase by more than 13% from October to October. It also expects federal monetary policy to tighten due to high inflation. So again, here's Zillow coming out and saying, you know, prices are going to be higher. So that's not why they got out of the home buying business. They got out because... They bit off more than they could chew and they had a backlog of homes that needed to be worked on and not enough people to, uh, not enough humans. So the computer got them into a bad situation. Are they going to come back in and continue their eye buying? Depends on how quickly they get out of this. I kind of doubt it. Uh, I think Open Door is taking full advantage of that right now and OfferPad. So uh, CoreLogic ends this by saying, expects home prices gains to slow to 2.5% annual increase by next year because it says affordability and economic concerns will deter some potential buyers. It also expects more homes to be available for sale. I hope we start seeing some of that in January, and that's what we're looking at when we follow these numbers. So let's hope in January we start seeing an increase at the same rate that we saw in 2019 and 2018. That will alleviate pricing pressures but they're still going to be high. Um, mortgage rates, you know, I don't see a crash coming if we get to 4%, but I see a, I see a slowdown. Are we going to get to 4%? I'm, uh, I'm not a Fed chairman, so I wouldn't be able to tell you that. We're going to find out a lot today, though. Uh, we're going to look at interest rates tonight, and, uh, uh, and I'll have the information for you tomorrow morning. If the presentation that comes out today has affected the markets. It could be one hell of a volatile day. I'm glad I'm not a lender. They're, they're sitting there right now going, do we lock? Do we not lock? Um, that's a stressful time for those guys because they've got, you know, they're looking at the rates and trying to get you the best rate and they want to lock it. And if the feds look like they're not going to clamp down as much as the markets anticipate, we might see a little dip tomorrow. Uh, but if they're wrong by two o'clock this afternoon, they're going to wish they would have locked in the morning. So I'm glad that isn't my job. My job is just to let you know what happened, and we'll do it here. And I hope to see you tomorrow morning. Everybody take on and have a great day and the rest of the week. Mm -hmm.